Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the table is a game called Aegis by Greenbrier Games. Aegis is a combining robot strategy game, similar to uh, Final Fantasy Tactics and those other tactic-like games, where you're going to be choosing up to five robots with you and your opponents doing a draft of sorts, and you can select any different type, and there's A, E, G, I, S, there's five different types. As well as, during the game, you can also uh, get those robots and combine them, maybe an AE robot or AEG or even an AEGIS robot. And the more you can combine, the stronger the robot is, but the less robots you're gonna have on the field to work with. Now this game is uh, two to six players. It takes roughly about 30 to 45 minutes and about 13 and up to play the game. A very fun and interesting strategy-like game. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, guys, so this is Aegis, and here's how to set it up. Frankly, you can have four, up to four players for this base core set, and the core set I have is the Arc Buster starter set. Now, there's up to, I believe, 90 different robots you can get, and they're going to look something like this. These are going to be some of the prototypes here. Uh, some of them are colored and some of them aren't, but they're basically little standees. As well as every single robot is going to have their own card set, A-E-G-I-S, all the different types of robots you can get as well as all the different um, combi combinable robots you can get, EGS, AGS, IGI, or EGI, so on and so forth. You're also going to get little uh, chits here that account for different things like stun and your increased damage, increased evasion. Everybody's going to have a player board. Here we have different characters, Stell and Gamond, and they're a basic energy tracker. And after you've selected all these different uh, robots, up to five of them, you and your friends, you're going to add up the total robot power symbols here all together. So if, if I had all five of these guys, for instance, it'd be four, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And so I'd put my tracker at 18. Now it varies depending on which ones you pick. Also, you're going to have go ahead and get these dice here, a bunch of different colored dice. They don't matter which ones you roll, really, um, as well as uh, a little tracker to define all the different things that are in the game. All right, let me go and tell you about, a little bit about the robot cards. All right, so like I was saying, there's five different robots to choose from or different types to choose from, and about 40 in just the core set here, and 90 if you get everything. On the card itself, you're going to have different things. In the top left-hand corner is the amount of energy the robot gives you. The top middle here is going to be your movement, and the far right-hand side is the class. You're also going to have the name of the robot and uh, anything specific about that specific robot, as well as how much damage it deals based on how many dice it rolls, how far the range is, and so on and so forth, as well as your passive ability here down at the bottom. Now, depending on which robot you choose, some of them might have attacks, some of them might not, some of them have supports. Other ones might not be able to move, but actually do a lot of damage. And so after you've chosen all of your robots, you're gonna go ahead and set it up on the board. Let me show you. All right, so here we have a look-see of what player one has done. Now he's gotten his five robots and he's put them on the board. That's the first thing you do. And then after you do that, your opponent does that as well. On his tracker here, he adds up all the energy counters up here in the top right-hand corner and places it right there. So he's done doing that. Next thing that happens is the beginning of his turn. Now every single robot has a movement counter and it's very simple. Whenever you do anything, a movement or an action or anything, you simply choose energy and you subtract it. One, two, three, and he moves this green guy, three. One, two, three. And a hex board you can move pretty much anywhere. Uh, it doesn't really matter in what direction. Then he's done, his character, you can tap it or move it to the side a little bit just so you can understand that it's no longer able to be used as far as moving goes. Because once you go up to the max, that's it. Uh, this guy might go six, so he'll subtract six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he'll move up. Three, six. Look at that. Done. Now let's say that there was an enemy over here, okay? Uh, this person here, he could actually shoot, and on his ability right, yeah, right uh, here, you've got three dice, and that is the amount you need to roll. This is a three, and then it tells you different things, like maybe it's damage, or maybe it's pulling somebody in a certain area, and the range of that. So he'll take his three dice, and he'll roll, and he got one. So that would probably be a grappling hook, so it would probably pull it closer to him or something like that. Other things could do, like, damage. So if he had rolled uh, two dice on a three plus, oh, that didn't happen. But if he were to have, he would do three damage at a range of three if he was close enough. That being said, after he would do that, the opponent would lose life equal to the amount of damage that has been dealt. And the damage, uh, the health markers are all down here, four, six, four, and three. If they lose that much health, they're simply removed from the game. Also, at any point in time, if you have robots together, you can pay energy equal to the amount of one of your combined robots. Let me go ahead and show you one. Okay, here's a combined robot. Now, we can't actually use this one because it has red, and this is your leader has red over here, or green over here. So you have to find one that's red, so let's go ahead and look for one right now. Hmm. 
And normally you're supposed to pick these before the game. Here you go, right here. Here's a green and a green, just like that. So, here we go, it costs five. So if he moved his tracker down five, one, two, three, four, and five, he'd remove his A and G units, as long as they were next to each other. Oop, just take these guys off. And he would place his marker for this unit here. Now, I don't have necessarily a marker, indicating him, but we can just use this guy as a replacement. And then he takes these guys away, they're gone, and a new robot appears. That's the great thing about combining robots. So players are basically going to be taking turns going back and forth using all of their energy. If any of their robots die, they lose the amount of energy that that robot provided, and as the game progresses, you're eventually going to run out of energy, and that's the main way to lose the game, is simply not having any robots left on the field. Um, you got a bunch of uh, different robots here, tons of different abilities. Some of them are heavy, which means if they move, they can't fight. Some of them have critical strike attacks. Some of them have more than one damage or a single damage. Retaliate is if something does damage to you, you can retaliate by doing damage back, or at least have a chance of doing so. Combat drop. You can start with this robot off the battlefield, and any time after your first turn, you may put it into play six or more hexes away from your opponent's units. Pretty nice. Just kind of drops in there. Uh, overload. This unit may use two of its actions if it doesn't move this turn. So normally you can only use one of your actions, but in this case you could use both of them, provided he doesn't move, which is kind of similar to heavy. Melee also means you have to be at least only one space away from your opponent. You can't do it unless you're right next to them, and usually it's a bunch of damage for melee. And anything else here I want to talk about? Um, there's splash damage, which is very important too. If anything damages a specific robot and that robot that damaged him had splash damage, any robot next to that robot would also take damage as well. As well as healing beams, you can actually try and heal your robots. And you're going to be rolling a bunch of dice sometimes and just trying to not roll a certain number. So it'll say like, roll five dice, and if you roll a one, this attack misses. Or roll three dice, and as long as you roll higher than a three for each of them, this attack does this. And those are really big, really strong dice. All right, so that's basically how you play the game, going back and forth in this tactics-like style game, uh, picking your robots beforehand and fighting and doing all these different things where you're moving across hexes. Let me tell you what I think about the game. Okay, so Aegis. Aegis is a tactics slash strategy game in which is very, very simple. You're going to place your units down after you're drafting them, and you can draft them any way you want, or just bring them to the field. Maybe your friend has the game and you have the game, and you can simply just bring it over, right? Your own little team. But however you want to do it, it's fairly simple. You just put your units on one side of the board, your opponent puts the units on their side of the board, or if you're playing with multiple players, everybody puts their units everywhere, right? And then you go into the, the battle and start uh, rolling dice and going back and forth with each other. And as their units, uh, your opponent's units start uh, dying, they're going to start losing energy, and they're going to be doing, doing less actions on their turn. So, suffice to say, the idea is to give them less actions as they continue throughout the game. Now, the idea, obviously, is not only just to decapitate or um, dis disable your opponents, decapitate, but also you want to make sure that uh, maybe they have a specific unit that only heals and stuff or can't move. Well, if at any point in time that your opponent has no units on the board that, a that actually can attack, you will also win the game as well, not only just knocking them all out. But as you can continue throughout the game, it's very, very unique and an interesting style game because there's so many different actions and abilities that are involved in this game. There's grappling and splash damage, there's lasers, there's cannons, there's guys that do melee punches, and there's also a, a infinite healing beams that can go across the board. Now, of course, you need to roll well in order to do this, and the rolling is not just simple grab the dice and, you know, like, it is grabbing the dice and chucking them, but there's different ways in which you're going to have to do that throughout every single different ability, too. Sometimes you just need to roll a couple dice and see if you get over a certain number and other times you need to roll a bunch of dice or only a couple dice and make sure you don't get certain numbers which is kind of a unique interesting twist but the biggest twist of this game overall is simply combining your units and if you think you're in a tough spot or you got low health or something like that you can simply make this your a unit your or your ae unit into an ae unit uh, or your g and s unit into a gs unit and these guys are big and buff and powerful. Now, of course, it takes certain um, amounts of energy to do so, but it's very, very simple. And heck, you can even start the game off with just one big Voltron-like uh, tactical unit. And if you want to do that against five of the units, I mean, you go ahead. But the idea of just the tactics going in and deciding when you want to do certain abilities and stuff is phenomenal in this game. We played this quite a few times, and every single game, it was so close. A lot of games, you think you're winning, and then suddenly you realize that your opponent has a LAS cannon. And while it doesn't move, if you get within 10 spaces of it, it's going to blow your guys away. So it's very important that you check and make sure you, uh, what your opponent has and what you have, and how you can mitigate the damage from them. Because my unit, luckily, in one of the games, I could shoot 10 spaces and his could only do 8, but I couldn't get anywhere near it because it would blow me up. Luckily, I had the range to deal with it. So these kind of 
choices in when you're going to be uh, drafting your units is very important. The replayability is there because there's so many robots. Just here in this base game, I have 40 plus. And the Kickstarter, I think, is going to have upwards of 80 or 90 units, which is great if you like variety. Not only that, but the uh, style of the game, the way the pieces look, everything is wonderfully done. Now, some people say miniatures, but the thing is, with 90 different units, that's going to be a big strain, especially on your wallet. So I think this would probably be a better way to go, in my opinion. Um, the, also, there's different things like stuns and defense up and evasions up. There's a bunch of little tokens that you're going to use on your units to remind you, which is really nice. I like the way they added that. Uh, the board is going to have different modular abilities as well. So while this board specifically down here, uh, right here, I'll just show you it. It's It's got its basic stuff, and I think it has two different sides to it. There's going to be additions, I think, that you can actually put on the board to change up how the board plays, which is nice, too, because a lot of the stuff on the board mitigates how you're going to be doing damage, as you can have line of sight, which is all very, very easily and very, very simply played out. A wonderful, wonderful game. I definitely suggest you check out Aegis by Greenbrier Games. All right, guys, so thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review of Aegis. If you thought this game was interesting, like I do, go ahead and check down the description below where you can see the Kickstarter going on right now. Or unless it's a month from now, then of course you missed it, and that's too bad for you. All right, and as well as checking out the rest of our content here on YouTube or our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We got tons of blog posts, giveaways, board game stuff, tons of wonderful Kickstarter list stuff that you can go ahead and search for different Kickstarter games without having to go on Kickstarter itself and uh, go through the trouble of having to find them. It's a lot easier. You just simply look on the list and you go scroll down and all the latest and greatest games are there for you. Don't forget to check out our affiliates as well, Devitos Gaming, as well as everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geeks. I'm more over here. You'll see them. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this video and we look forward to seeing you next time.